this is an IGCSE and GCSE chemistry video. We're going to be talking about the topic of energetics. Because it's such a maths based topic, I think probably the best thing to do is to show you some examples of past paper questions so you can understand how they're going to kind of test you on this topic. It is important, however, that you do know some crucial definitions. The first one is what the term endothermic reaction means. So notice in endothermic reactions, heat energy is taken in and less energy is needed to make the bonds than break the bonds. An exothermic reaction now, you kind of use the exact opposite wording. So just learn the definition once and switch it around. So heat energy this time is given out. More energy is needed to make the bonds than break the bonds. If they ask you for examples, Photosynthesis is a good example of an endothermic reaction. Reactions such as combustion and neutralisation are both examples of exothermic reactions. You could be asked to draw an energy profile. I'm just going to point out the key things to notice. So you always write your reactants and products on horizontal lines. The reactants always come before the products. Now notice with an exothermic reaction, the change in energy is negative. With endothermic reactions, the change in energy is positive. The difference between the reactant energy level and the top of that peak is known as the activation energy. Notice that it differs for endothermic and exothermic reactions. If they ask you to define activation energy, is that it's the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. And then how do catalysts work? Well, you want to link your explanation with activation energy and you just say that first of all they speed up the rate of reaction without being used up and how do they do that by providing an alternative reaction pathway with lower activation energy and if you're asked to label on these sorts of diagrams how catalyst works you just want to draw a new peak slightly lower because by doing that you've lowered activation energy. So now we're going to go through some example questions. So a student uses this apparatus to measure the temperature change when lithium iodide dissolves in water. He measures the steady temperature of the water before adding the lithium iodide. He then adds the lithium iodide, stirs the mixture until all the solid dissolves and records the maximum temperature reached. The diagram shows the thermometer readings before and after dissolving the lithium oxide. Use the readings to complete the table. Temperature in degrees Celsius after adding lithium iodide. So make sure you're reading it nice and accurately here. It's 22.3 degrees. Temperature in degrees Celsius before adding lithium iodide, 16.7 degrees. Your temperature change therefore is the difference in those numbers, so it's 5.6 degrees. In a second experiment using the same mass of water, the student records a temperature increase of 4.9 degrees Celsius. Use this expression to calculate the heat energy change in this experiment. So our mass of water is 100 grams. You need to multiply that by the specific heat capacity times the temperature change to get 2,058 joules. In this experiment, 6.3 grams of lithium iodide were used to calculate the amount in moles of lithium iodide in 6.3 grams. You need this formula triangle. It states that mass is number of moles times MR. We're after the number of moles, so we do mass divided by MR. So 6.3 divided by 134, as we're given that value in the question, to get a value which is 0.047 C. In a third experiment, the student obtains these results. Heat energy change in joules, 2,400. Amount of lithium iodide in mole, 0.048. Calculate the molar enthalpy change in kJ per mole. So let's write out what we're doing. Molar enthalpy change. And even if you don't know the equation, hopefully the fact that the units are these helps you see that you need your energy on the top and then you need to divide it by the number of moles underneath. Notice the difference in the units, kJ and joules, so you need to divide this number by 1000 to get 2.4. The number of moles stays the same to get a value which is 50. The temperature change in this experiment shows that dissolving lithium iodide in the water to form lithium iodide solution is an exothermic process. Complete the energy level diagram to show the position of the lithium iodide solution. Label the diagram to show delta H, the molar enthalpy change. So we know it's an exothermic reaction, which means our products will be at a lower energy than our reactants. 
doesn't really matter where you draw it. So there are your products drawn to the right. Label it lithium iodide solution. And then don't forget to put your delta H on. Two, a student does some experiments to find the heat energy released when natural gas burns. She uses this apparatus. The diagram shows the thermometer readings in one of her experiments. So we need to take those readings. Temperature of the water at the start is 18.7. Temperature of the water at the end is 27.2. Temperature change is therefore 8.5. The student repeats the experiment three times. The table shows her results. Calculate the amount of moles at room temperature and pressure of methane burned in experiment one. Assume that natural gas only contains methane. The volume of one mole of a gas at room temperature and pressure is 24,000 centimetres cubed. In order to do this, you need to do the volume given in the question, 1,450, divided by the volume occupied by one mole of gas. So your value here is 0 0.0604. The quantity of heat energy released in experiment one is 29,200 joules. Calculate the molar entropy change in kJ per mole for the combustion of methane. Similar to the previous question, therefore, again, it's going to be energy divided by number of moles. You need to divide that number by a thousand in order to make it in kJ. That's 29.2. You've worked out the number of moles from the previous subsection. So your final answer here is 483. Notice that because the temperature change was an increase, we know it's an exothermic reaction. The temperature rise in experiment two is 41.2 degrees Celsius. Calculate the heat energy change in experiment two using the expression heat energy change equals volume of water times 4.2 times temperature change. So looking up to find that volume of water, it's 200, times 4.2, times the 41.2, so we have a value of 34,608. Again, the temperature increased, so it's exothermic. The student uses the results from experiment 3 to calculate the molar enthalpy change in kJ per mole for the combustion of methane. She compares her value with the value in the data book. The student's value was minus 510. The data book value was minus 890, which is the best explanation for the large difference between these two values. I can already know before I even look at the answers that it's going to be something to do with heat loss to the surroundings. Effectively, you're always going to find this when you're doing a kind of basic experiment that there's going to be loads of heat loss, which accounts for the difference in these numbers. So A, natural gas contains other gases that release heat energy when burned. I don't like that answer. Not all the heat energy is transferred to the water, yes, because some of it goes to the surroundings. Some of the water evaporates during the experiment. The student measures the gas by volume instead of by mass. Nope. So the answer here is B. The student uses a table of average bond energies to calculate another value for the molar enthalpy of combustion of methane. The equation for the combustion can be shown using displayed formulae. Use values from the table to calculate the energy taken in when the bonds in the reactants are broken. So we are looking at that part of the equation. So how many CH bonds do we have? One, two, three, four. So we need to do four lots of the CH value, which is 412. And then we need to do two lots of the O double bond O, which is 496. Make sure you add those values together to get a value which is 2640. Use values from the table to calculate the energy given out when the bonds in the products are formed. So we're switching our attention to this side of the equation. How many O double bond C bonds do we have? It's two. So that's two lots of seven, four, three. And then how many H O bonds do we have? One, two, and then that big two means that there's four of them. Once you've added those up, you get this value. Use your answers to one and two to calculate the molar enthalpy change for the combustion of methane. So you need to do energy of the reactants minus products. So using your previously calculated values, you get a value which is minus 698. Question three, a student investigates the temperature rise of water in a copper can placed above a spirit burner containing a flammable liquid. This is the student's method. Place 200 grams of water in the copper can and record the temperature of the water 
Weigh the spirit burner containing the flammable liquid. Place the spirit burner underneath the copper can and light the burner. After two minutes, extinguish the flame and record the maximum temperature of the water. Reweigh the spirit burner containing the remaining flammable liquid. State whether each of the changes listed in the table would increase, decrease, or have no effect on the value of the maximum temperature reached of the water. Increasing the distance between the spirit burner and the copper can. Hopefully you can see that that will decrease that maximum temperature because less of that heat is felt. Using a thermometer with divisions of 0.2 degrees Celsius instead of 0.5, all that does is alter the precision. It doesn't actually alter the true value of that temperature. Adding insulation to the side of the copper can, this is a good thing because it stops heat loss, which means that effectively more heat should be transferred to the water, so we should see an increase in its temperature. In one experiment, pentane was used as the flammable liquid. The calculated heat energy change was 51,900 joules. In the experiment, the mass of pentane burned was 1.88 grams. The relative molecular mass of pentane is 72. Use this information to calculate the molar enthalpy change of combustion in kJ per mole of pentane. So you need to learn this equation, which is that molar enthalpy change equals energy divided by number of moles. We don't have the number of moles. So you're going to have to use the equation mole is mass divided by mR in order to find that. We know the mass is given in the question as being 1.88 grams. The mR of pentane is also given, which is 72. So do a small calculation over on the side. Now we're ready to substitute our numbers into the equation. Notice that this is in joules. We need to convert it into kilojoules. So that's 51.9. So do 51.9 divided by 0.0261, which to three significant figures is 1,990 kilojoules per mole and is an exothermic reaction.